Ayah number 41. Infiru khifafan wa thiqalan wa jahidu bi amwalikum wa anfusikum fi sabilillah. Thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. Allah says, again, he addresses the companions of the Prophet. Go forth in the way of God, lightly or heavily, and strive with your wealth and yourselves in the way of God. That is better for you if you but know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a very clear instruction to the companions that you don't have a choice. This is not, you know, a matter of, you know, a recommendation. You have to go. Infiru. Khifafan wa thiqala. Go forth in the way of God, lightly or heavily. Now, what is what is meant by khifafan wa thiqala? Khifafan comes from the word khafif, which means to be light. And thiqalan comes from the word thaqil, which means to be heavy. Some, some of the commentators of the Quran, they say, this means go forth, join the Prophet, whether you want to join him willingly or reluctantly. Whether you go towards jihad lightly, meaning it's easy for you to go towards it, or it's a heavy task. So go willingly or unwillingly. You don't have an option of staying home. Others, other commentators, they say, go heavily armed or lightly armed because some of the companions were not able to uh they were not able to uh, afford a lot of weaponry so allah says go whether you have whether you're heavy with weapons or you're light with weapons go whether you are elderly or young Go whether you are married or unmarried. You know, someone who's married is heavier because he has responsibilities. A person who is single, it's lighter for him to go. He's more mobile. Allah is saying that go forth in the way of God lightly or heavily. And there are many different interpretations of what it means to go lightly or heavily. And strive with your wealth and yourselves. So here, jihad, there are two aspects of jihad, of the struggle that are mentioned. Struggling with your wealth and yourselves. Because jihad, especially during the time of the Prophet, there was a financial sacrifice that was involved. And I believe that we, we spoke about this in our previous sessions, that you know, the Prophet, you know, today if you want to join the military, they have an incentive, right? You, they give you a, a sign-on bonus. They provide you with weaponry. But during the time of the Prophet, those who wanted to participate with Rasulullah in jihad, not only do they have to go and risk their lives, you have to use your own money and purchase a sword, you know, uh, a bow and arrow, a shield transportation so it was a heavy financial investment for many of the companions so Allah says strive with your wealth and with yourselves and subhanallah you find that wealth is mentioned before the self and this shows you brothers and sisters how difficult it was for some of them to go to the battlefield that it seems that one of the the greatest struggles for the companions was sacrificing wealth. That sacrificing wealth for some of them was even more difficult than putting their lives in danger. Again, Allah reminds them that this is better for you. You are the beneficiary if you go and you fight. The Prophet is not going to benefit. Allah is not going to benefit. If you struggle with your wealth and with yourselves, don't ever think for a moment that Rasulullah is the beneficiary. 
or Allah is the beneficiary. Allah reminds them, ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That is better for you if you only knew. If you only knew that this jihad is serving a higher purpose. Ayah number 42. لَوْ كَانَ عَرَضًا قَرِيبًا وَسَفَرًا قَاصِدًا لَتَّبَعُوكَ وَلَكِنْ بَعُدَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الشُّقَّةُ وَسَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَوْ اسْتَطَعْنَا لَخَرَجْنَا مَعَكُمْ يُهْلِكُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah says, were it something ephemeral nearby, or on an easy journey, they would have followed you. But the journey was too great for them. But the journey was too great for them. And they will swear by God, if we had been able, we would have, we would have gone out with you. They destroy themselves and God knows that they are liars. It's interesting here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, so the expedition traveling to Tabuk entails a lot of struggle. Allah is saying that if it was a shorter journey, if, if, they, had, if they could see material acquisition in front of their eyes, they would have joined you. Meaning, they're willing to make small sacrifices. If, if the battle was close by, they would have followed you. But the journey was too great for them. Going all the way to Tabuk and fighting against the Romans, it was too difficult for them. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, and this is part of the miraculous nature of the Quran, Allah predicts, he prophesizes, he foretells what these munafiqeen are going to tell the Prophet. You know, you know when you, you know, brothers and sisters, when you're at fault, when a person is at fault and they do something wrong, they have a tendency to overcompensate. So they are actually enemies of the Prophet. They are unwilling to support the Prophet. So what do they do? Allah says they will come to you. Meaning it hasn't happened yet, but Allah is telling the Prophet that, Ya Rasulullah, very soon, these same munafiqeen who don't want to join you in battle, they're going to come to you. And what are they going to say? They're going to say, they're going to swear by God. They're going to make an oath. What are they going to say? If we had been able, if we were able to join you, O Muhammad, we would have gone out with you. But our circumstances do not allow us to join you. They make excuses. But they say, Wallahi, Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, if we could, we would be honored to join you. But what does Allah say? Yuhlikuna anfusahum. They're destroying themselves. Meaning, who's being harmed here? Are they harming the Prophet by not participating? Allah says they're, they're damaging their own souls. I have given them a great opportunity for spiritual growth, but they missed out on this opportunity. They're destroying themselves. And Allah knows that they are liars. They're lying to you, Ya Rasulullah. When they say that we would join you if we were able to, Allah says they're lying to you. Now I want you to, I want you to ponder over something, my dear brothers and sisters. Who is Allah calling liars? Who are these individuals who are coming to the Prophet and they're saying, Wallah, Who are these people? They're the companions of the Prophet. Some of the companions of the Prophet, according to Quran, that's why it astonishes me that the, the, the followers of Ahlul Bayt are accused of speaking ill of the companions. Allah here is telling us some of the Sahaba used to come to the Prophet when they were told to go 
and participate in the battle of Tabuk, they come to Rasulullah and they swear in God's name that if they were able to join the Prophet, they would have. What does Allah say? They're destroying themselves and Allah bears witness. Wallahu ya'lamu. Innahum lakadibun. Allah is saying that they're liars. Who are, who are, who's lying? Some of the companions of the Prophet are lying to Rasulullah. If they have the audacity to lie to the face of the Prophet and to invoke the name of God when they're lying to the Prophet, should it come as a surprise that some of these companions, they fabricated a hadith? Then when they're asked about what happened on the day of Ghadir, they deny it? Like Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik was the companion of the Prophet. When Ali ibn Abi Talib later on wanted him to bear witness to what was announced on the day of Ghadir, he refused. And the Imam made a dua against him and he became blind. They, some of them used to lie to Rasulullah. So a student of the Quran understands that it's, it's against the Qur'an to say that all of the companions were pious and they're noble and we can follow all of them. Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Some of them are liars. I think, brothers and sisters, uh, we'll have to conclude here because there's a, there's a bit of detail I'd like to go in with respect to the... Uh, the following verses. So we'll conclude here and inshallah we'll take questions. But as one final comment, I hope you see, brothers and sisters, the significance of these verses that we're, that we're, uh, we're studying. This is, a, this is a surah that was revealed less than two years before the death of the Prophet. And Allah is clearly telling us that some of them are lying to the Prophet's face. So it should come to no surprise. No one should say, how is it possible that after the death of the Prophet, so many of these companions defied the instructions of the Prophet. They were lying to Rasulullah to his face when he was alive. How do you think they're going to conduct themselves after the death of the Prophet? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq to remain steadfast and following the Holy Prophet and his Immaculate Family. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. If there are any questions or comments, we can take them now, inshallah. Uh, are there any other stories in the Quran that emphasize the or that highlight the behaviors of the companions uh, of this nature? I would say yes, you know, there, there are definitely, for example, I don't remember the, I'd have to look up the verse, but for example, when Allah speaks about the battle of Uhud, Allah says to the companions, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ Some of you seek dunya, and others among you seek the akhirah. So the Qur'an divides the companions of the Prophet into two groups. Some of them do things for the sake of dunya and others, they seek the akhirah. Another example is the surah that we recite every Friday, you know, Salat al-Jumu'ah. What do we say in Surah al-Jumu'ah? وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا انْفَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ when the Prophet ﷺ would stand for prayer, some of the companions, not all of them, some of the companions would leave. Can you imagine this? I want you to envision this. They would be praying behind the Prophet and they hear someone selling something in the marketplace. Allahu Akbar. They break their prayer 
and they go into the marketplace and they leave Rasulullah standing. They rush to it. They rush to what's being sold in the marketplace. They leave you standing in your mihrab by yourself. Now, what does this tell us? That some of them used to abandon the Prophet even when there was no danger. You know, it's one thing to abandon the Prophet when there's a battle, when your life is in danger. Some of them, their iman is so weak that they leave the Prophet in the middle of salah when there is no danger just because they don't want to miss out on something that's being sold. You know, it reminds me of the battle of, uh, of Uhud. The battle of Uhud, we know that the Prophet was severely injured. His front teeth were broken. His lip was, was cut and he was bleeding profusely. Many, the overwhelming majority of the Muslim Sahaba, they ran away. So they ask Amir al-Mu'mineen after, I, don't, I believe maybe this was after the death of the Prophet. They ask Amir al-Mu'mineen, why did the Sahaba, many of them, why did they run and retreat in the battle of Uhud? So someone asks Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen this question. Why is it that so many of the companions ran in the battle of Uhud? The Imam says, you go ask them. Some of them are still alive. You can ask them yourself. So this person goes and asks some of them who ran. Why did you guys run in the battle of Uhud? They say that we ran because we thought the Prophet had died and what's the point of fighting if the Prophet has been killed? So this person comes back to Amir al-Mu'mini and he says that this is the answer that they gave. They said, what's the point of fighting if the Prophet has been killed? Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, the reason I stayed and continue to fight is because what is the point of living if Rasulullah has been killed? This is Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is why we love Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, what's the point of living if, if, if the Prophet... He's like, the same reason that they gave, that's the reason that I would continue to fight. They say, what's the point of fighting if the Prophet has been killed? Ali says, what's the point of living if Rasulullah has been killed, I would continue to fight. So there are many ayats that reference the misconduct and uh, the weakness of their faith. But again, men, there are many companions who are noble. Many of the shuhada of Uhud, of, of Badr, we honor them, we revere them. But uh, there are many who are revered by Muslims today that fell short in their, uh, in their duty to the Prophet. Who disobeyed openly. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Even this, uh, this just to add to uh, Zayn's and uh, a little bit of uh, explanation from you. Uh, even during um, uh, the time of Salah uh, at Masjid al Quba, when the order of uh, Qibla was, uh, you know, given to the Prophet to change the Qibla from, um, you know, from Jerusalem to Kaaba. Even that time, there were a lot of uh, uh, Ashab uh, who were praying behind the Prophet who started doubting um, the sanity of the Prophet, wasn't it? And in which surah was that, The uh, Off the top of my head, I'm... I'm honestly not sure what uh, what surah it's in, but but definitely this is another example of some of the companions questioning the nubuwa of the Prophet after the uh, the direction of the qibla was changed. In fact, you know, not uh, not only that, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, you find that when the Prophet signed this peace treaty with the mushrikeen. Many, some of the most notable companions who are very well known, they doubted, openly doubted the Nubuwa of the Holy Prophet. And there have been, there are many, many occasions. In fact, many people don't know this, but you know, in Surah Al-Hujurat, 
where Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah says, those who call up, hujurat literally means the dwellings. Allah says, those who call out, who shout out, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Why was this ayah revealed? This, even in Bukhari, this is mentioned. Abu Bakr and Umar, they used to stand outside of the house of the Prophet and they used to shout out, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Ukhruj ilayna. O Muhammad, O Muhammad, come out. They would call the Prophet, Ya Muhammad, they would shout. What does Allah say? Inna alladheena yunadunaka min wara'i al-hujurat. Those who call out to you from outside, min wara'i al-hujurat, outside of the house of the Prophet. Allah says, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah says they have no aql. And there are many ayats in the Quran and Allah tells us what he says about those who have no aql. Is, is, is Allah praising them when he says they have no aql? They have no intellect? It's not. It's, Allah is condemning them. And subhanAllah, wallah, I read this myself, that these, these, this verse was revealed about the first and the second. أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ so yeah, maybe this this requires a, a lecture series on the the verses in the Quran that speak about the companions. Some of the ayat they praise the companions. There's no doubt, the Prophet had some very noble companions. But that we shouldn't be naive into thinking that they were all pious and they were all righteous. The companions of Rasulullah are like the companions of previous prophets. Some of them were faithful. Some of them were faithless, like Bani Israel. Some of them were obedient to Musa, others were not.